you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and I've got a very special list for you today because we're going to be talking about video game features that only a small percentage of extremely dedicated and passionate fans ever got to unlock. Now this is the thing, when anyone's aiming for a 100% completion of a video game, sometimes you're doing this for the sole reason of just saying, I've done this. I mean, just ask Gerard Khalil, he knows a lot about it. But some developers actually make the process of going through all of those hours and all of of those deaths actually worth it with some truly incredible unlockables. So let's take a look at some of these god tier items that only god tier gamers can ever hope to unlock. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video game features only hardcore gamers unlocked. Number 10. God Seeker Mode – Hollow Knight Metroidvania games tend to cater to a more committed fanbase. I mean, after all, they're riddled with hidden items, obscure little puzzles, completion percentages, optional bosses, and then some. The much beloved Hollow Knight has all of these things in spades, while also chucking in an almost absurdly difficult level that has now become infamous. And if you toiled your way through the path of pain, well, you already know this. Those that have mastered the game's combat and platforming mechanics, however, have access to a range of content that some may never even know exists. God Seeker mode is a great example of that. This mode is accessible in God Home, unlocked after successfully completing the first trio of Pantheons, Pantheon of the Master, Pantheon of the Artist, and Pantheon of the Sage. These brutal boss rush challenges are tough enough in and of themselves, pushing the player to their limits in a series of difficult bouts. But if you do triumph over them, then God Seeker mode is is unlocked. This grants access to almost every upgrade and piece of equipment for you to just test out at your leisure against those dastardly bosses. Nice. Number 9. Super Dante, Super Nero, and Super V Costumes Devil May Cry 5 Capcom's Devil May Cry franchise has always focused around one core concept – slick, stylish, hack-and-slash action. The enigmatic Dante, hunter of demons and possessor of some of the coolest weapons in the business, is of course the star, and he does not mess around. Now, Devil May Cry 5 launched in March 2019, and it revolves around a brand new character, V as well as Dante and Nero, as they mount an assault against a demonic powerhouse who is out to destroy the world. It's no surprise that Devil May Cry 5 pulls no punches with regards to the franchise's famous brutal level of challenge. Dante Must Die, for example, as the name suggests, is a particularly vicious setting. In this mode, enemies are incredibly aggressive to the extent that they have devil triggers of their own, oh, and also their health is doubled. Brilliant. It may not be the hardest mode in the game, the one-shot nature and limited ability to respawn of hell and hell mode is something else entirely, but many players will never even get to that level. However, for your troubles, you will unlock some truly amazing costumes which you can use to make your lesser skilled friends even more jealous. Number 8. Cos Parasite – Bloodborne Dark Souls is, 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 is spiritual successor, Bloodborne boasts some of the most unique weapons in gaming. Trick weapons can be transformed with the tap of L1 even mid-combo, which sometimes drastically change their movesets and capabilities. The likes of Simon's Bowblade, which is a long curved sword which transforms into a bow, are a riot to experiment with, but the Kos Parasite is perhaps the game's most unique weapon of all. This bizarre weapon is very reliant on the arcane stat, giving the player tentacles which they can use as melee attacks or as longer range magical moves. It's a complex weapon for expert players, which is pretty fitting considering how it's unlocked. To obtain this parasite, the player has to reach the end of the expansion, The Old Hunters. This requires tangling with some of the toughest bosses in the game, including Ludwig the Accursed, Ludwig the Holy Blade, and the infamous Orphan of Kos itself. This fast-moving, hard-hitting opponent would test every ounce of your Bloodborne fundamentals. Only by defeating it can you claim the parasite. But there's actually a further step to take. This weapon true potential is actually only unlocked by equipping the Milkweed Rune, causing a unique squid-like transformation in the Hunter and expanding the weapon's moveset. And this rune must be acquired by completing an earlier side quest. And all told, earning the Cos Parasite and the Milkweed Rune together is the mark of a truly accomplished Bloodborne player. Number 7. Holy Card – The Binding of Isaac The Binding of Isaac is a devious and rather poop-centric roguelike that doesn't offer an easy ride at the best of times. The RNG 
RNG factor means that any given run can be made much easier or much harder depending on the power-ups the player finds during the game. In one run, you'll be flying and launching devastating eye lasers at everything in sight, while the next, you might be leaving toxic puddles of pee on the floor for enemies to blunder onto. Character choice has a huge impact on the game as well. Some offer an advantage to Isaac, such as higher HP, while The Lost seems to have been simply designed as a hard mode in and of itself. The Lost doesn't have any HP and can't gain any, making completing an already difficult task an absolute nightmare. One such challenge with this is defeating Delirium, the ultimate final boss. Doing so as The Lost will actually unlock the Holy Card, which gives the effects of Holy Mantle in one room while giving the chance to spawn another copy of itself. <clears throat> it's potentially a very powerful card, but uh, it's very difficult to unlock. Number 6. The Final Bowser Battle – Super Mario Odyssey now, generally speaking, the Super Mario titles aren't considered especially difficult, I mean, lost levels aside, as accessibility is meant to be Mario's watchword after all. If players simply want to see Super Mario Odyssey's story through to its conclusion, they shouldn't have too much difficulty in doing so, but defeating the game's true final boss is an entirely different story. There are some major platforming challenges ahead and an absurd total of 999 moons to collect. It's a tremendous slog just to nab them all, as menial and as simple as some of them are. On doing so, however, the player gains access to another, much more difficult battle with Bowser. Victory here grants the final prize, a simple postcard thanking the player for their dedication. <laughs> dedication is the word, my friend, as only the most committed players are going to make it that far. Number 5. Pokeball Colored Magirna – Pokemon Home Pokemon, as with Mario, is a series famous for its accessibility and rather easy nature. Competitive battling is surprisingly complex, but as far as the main story goes, the ride tends to be a gentle one. Despite this, the whole catch em all concept sometimes confounds even the most dedicated players. With the sheer number of Pokemon in the series these days making the ultimate goal of having every single Pokemon quite hard to achieve, to that end, Pokemon Home offers a coveted Prize, the unique Pokeball-themed variant of the mythical critter Magirna. How is it unlocked? Well, by registering every single Pokemon in home. Originally, a living dex was needed, but that was changed in an update. As no game in the series actually features every known creature as of Pokemon Sword and Shield, a lot of transferring through Pokemon Bank and Pokemon Home will be needed to accomplish this feat. Is it worth it? Um, maybe not. Number 4. Foxhound Extreme Ranking – Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater With the Metal Gear Solid series' constant emphasis on tactical espionage action, one thing was made very clear from the start – that these are not mindless shooter games. The slower, more cerebral gameplay in these stealth classics sees players plotting routes carefully, distracting guards, and sneaking by, temporarily jamming their machines with chaff grenades and so on. But the franchise just loves ranking players on how well they stuck to these concepts at the end of a run. Depending on the game, a range of animal-based rankings are on offer, with Foxhound naturally being the most coveted. To obtain this ranking in Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater on extreme difficulty, the player must complete the game in under 5 hours without continuing, triggering a single alert or killing even one enemy. Also, if you take 10 bars or more of damage, you're out of the running too. One for the true masters of the game indeed. Number 3. The Brass Knuckles – The Evil Within The Evil Within is a survival horror experience from genre master Shinji Mikami. As such, it features all the staples that fans would expect – lots of sneaking down long hallways, very lumpy enemies, and great scarcity of ammo, and so forth. It isn't the easiest experience at the best of times, but successfully completing Sebastian's adventure once unlocks the Nightmare and Akumu modes. Nightmare Mode cranks up the aggression and health of enemies and reduces all resources that the player receives. It's one of the most stringent tests of survival horror mastery ever, but Akumu Mode goes one step further by adding in another stipulation. The player will instantly die from any damage. And what's the reward for completing the game on either of these settings? The Brass Knuckles, a melee weapon that provides a huge boost to Sebastian's unarmed attacks. They're a lot of fun to mess around with, but uh, you have to actually unlock them first. Number 2. Excalibur 2 – Final Fantasy IX so many Final Fantasy IX fans simply just accept that Ragnarok is Steiner's de facto ultimate weapon. Why is that? Well, because Excalibur II is just so much more of a pain to acquire. While this sword is actually the strongest weapon in the game, it's only available under very unique circumstances. It's found in Memoria just before the Crystal World. Several ultimate weapons are also found in this final dungeon, but here's the kicker. Excalibur II will disappear if more than 12 hours on a save file have passed. As such, only experienced speedrunners who know the game 
frame inside out need even apply. Even then, what is actually left to use the weapon against just before the game ends? Many just beat the boss, nab the sword and just say they've done it. But this is super, super impractical. And number 1. UFOs, Franklin's Special T-Shirt, and more – Grand Theft Auto V Grand Theft Auto V is Rockstar's crowning achievement, an open-world masterpiece that continues to deliver new content almost seven years after its original release. Los Santos is a living, breathing, city-like playground unlike any other in gaming, and there's a whole lot of things to do, steal, and accomplish. Dedicated completionists have surely tried to achieve that fabled 100%, but you know what? It is no mean feat. Amongst other things, the play will need to complete 69 main missions, hobbies and pastimes side quests, collect all letter scraps and spaceship parts, indulge in random events, and more besides. Not every little activity is required for an official 100% completion rate, but even this list will take you hours upon hours, and the rewards for obtaining 100% as recorded by the game are as follows. The Golden Peyote plant will appear in the mountains, which allows you to transform into Sasquatch, but only after the mission the last one is completed, which itself is a reward for achieving 100%, and Franklin will also receive a 100% t-shirt, and the career criminal trophy will pop. But most importantly of all, UFOs will actually begin to spawn at certain points of the map. Hmm, interesting. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 video game features only hardcore gamers unlocked. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. If you want to chat to me further, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, my personal board game channel where I stream every single Wednesday and Sunday. It'd be great to see you over there. But before I go, my friends, I just want to say one thing. You do not need to be a hardcore gamer to unlock this special feature, which is just being kind to yourself. Seriously, just take some time out of your day-to-day -day routine and just appreciate that you are a big-ass ledge. You deserve love, happiness, and success, and do not let anything or anyone tell you otherwise, okay? Now go out there and absolutely smash it. As always, I've been Jules, you have been awesome, never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.